Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson in computer literacy class. The lesson is going to be on how to use Google Sheets to create a budget, which is an important skill in life and a skill that it is better to earn learn earlier rather than later. So um, we're going to work through that whole process with you here. Uh, in the past, we have used uh, Microsoft Excel, but because we use the Chromebooks and Google Sheets is available to us and Microsoft Excel is not, uh, it is important that we kind of focus on the application that we actually have. So if you go into your apps menu, uh, you should see a icon that looks remarkably like this. You will click on it and you will open up a document that looks remarkably like this. Uh, and in this case, we are going to go ahead and do a blank document, although you do see there is a monthly budget document here. We're going to be using that later. I really want to use the blank document to show you how to use the basic functions of Google Sheets. And then later on, uh, we'll use the monthly budget one to show you that specific format. So we're going to go and click this. It will create a blank document that looks remarkably like this. So the first thing you want to do is give it a title. I'm going to give this the title, Mr. Blumendahl's Budget. In your case, you're going to put your name and then the budget. So that's how you'll turn in the document. Um, I can also post this as a template I want to get done here so that you guys can just make a copy of it. But it's also important to know how to set it up yourself. So I'm going to, I'm going to think on that one for a minute. So now I've clicked this upper left hand corner box here where you see the arrow. I'm going to make this font something that lends itself to currency. So we're going to go with Courier New because Courier New is a good font to use for currency because all of the numbers and decimal points will line up correctly and I am going to go with a font size of 14 so it will be um, nice and big. Uh, we're going to call the title of this document My Monthly Budget and that's what I want your title to be. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to you know, keep it the, the same color that it is. It doesn't need to be anything else and that particular line I want to be let's make that 24 so that's going to be bigger but everything else on here is going to be in that size 14 font so um, the first thing you want to do in your budget is you're going to have categories so we're just going to go and put that in here caps lock category actually Apparently, I already have the caps lock on. Category, and it would help if I spelled that correctly. Okay, and then this one is going to be amount. And actually, yeah, no, we'll just do category and amount. And actually, what we should do is call this budgeted. amount and we're going to call this the actual meaning how much did we budget to spend and how much did we actually spend because there is a difference between those two things uh, and I'm also going to widen this out up here and widen this out up here and widen this out up here so that our columns actually make sense um, actual should not be there it should be here so Hopefully what I've done there makes sense. Uh, and if I want to go ahead and format this row so that um, maybe we're underlining the text. It's not giving me underline as an option. Format, underline right there. You go to format and underline. So those are all now underlined. So the first thing you do when you create a budget is you have to list how much money you actually make. So we're going to call that paycheck. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to make it so that I have two jobs. So you'll see 
um, kind of how that works out. So say my first job is uh, school, I'm a teacher, so school paycheck. You know what? I'm not going to be a teacher. I am going to be a single mother of two children. Okay, so imagine me as a single mother of two children, because that's what I just became. So we're going to have paycheck, and we're going to have child support. Okay. If your parents aren't divorced, you don't have to worry about that. Also, I want to make this bold, I think. So bold, perfect. So, my paycheck. I am a single mom. I have a 40 hour a week job. And let's say I make $15 an hour at my $40 a week job. So, I'm going to go down here to calculator. I'm going to do the math. 15 times 40 times 4 equals $2,400 a month. That's how much money I have. And if you take taxes out of that, we'll just uh, take out 15% per taxes, because that's about what people pay in taxes, uh, times 0.85. So I might make that much money, but this is how much money is actually in my check. So that's going to be $2,040. Now notice that that number is not in currency form. So we need to come up here, highlight the entire B column, and we are going to go ahead and put that into currency. Now it is right oriented, and it says $2,040, and it's got the decimal points. Now, because I have two kids, um, my ex owes me child support each month. And I'm going to be optimistic and say that that child support actually does get paid every month because my ex is responsible. So $600. So that's how much I budget for. Your paycheck will vary. So it just so happens that this month I worked a little bit of overtime. So my check was actually 22, 25. We'll even throw some decimal points in there. Notice it doesn't have a dollar sign because I have not actually gone up here to make it currency. Now it's currency. And my X was on time and paid me my actual amount. So congratulations. I made more than I was supposed to make. So here I'm going to put this in all caps. Total income. Okay. So this is where we start using formulas. And formulas are kind of cool. So I'm going to highlight this box. I'm going to press the equal sign. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this box. Click the plus at the bottom. What just happened? I'm going to undo that. The back arrow, control Z, is undo. Whatever just happened erased what I had going before. So I'm going to click the equal sign. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. This is box B4. And so I'm going to go minus. And this is box B5. Actually, I don't want it to be minus. It's going to be the sum. Sum meaning adding two numbers together. Parentheses B4 colon B5. What that means is I'm adding up this box and this box. I'm going to press enter and it actually does the math for me. So my total income budgeted is $2,640. My actual income budgeted is going to be the sum of C4 and C5. So equals sum C4 colon C5. And it just so happens that um, that is my total income that I actually made. And here I'm going to put difference, because that's important. What's the difference between what I budgeted and what actually happened? That's fairly important. Underline it? OK. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put what I actually made minus what I budgeted. So equals. 
C4 minus B4. C4 minus B4. So I made $185.36 more than I budgeted for. And this is going to be D5 or C5 minus B5. And since the numbers are exactly the same, that's zero. Okay? And then here, this is going to be um, C6 minus B6. So, oops, I made a mistake. Delete that. So, I made $185.36 more than I budgeted for. So now we're going to go into expenses. Um, I am, unfortunately, a renter. So I don't have a mortgage, but if you own your house, this would be your mortgage. And I'm going to put rent or mortgage because what I'm asking you guys to do is go home and talk to your parents uh, and ask them what it is. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make this um, a cool thousand bucks because that's about what the average person spends on. Well, if I have a two-bedroom apartment, let's say it's 900. I'm going to be honest, I haven't rented in a while, so that's higher than what I used to pay, but I'm going to kind of take a guess that that's about what it is now. So $900 a month on rent, and that payment stays the same, so that's how much I actually spent. And so equals C8 minus B8. So that's going to stay the same. Um, the other expenses you have, if you don't own your car, you have a car payment and that stays stable every month. So say I have a $150 a month car payment. Um, and of course that's not, and because I made extra money, um, I decided to spend an extra $50 on my car payment so I could pay my car off faster. So I'm gonna spend $200 on my car because I had extra money. That's a debt. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pay that debt down a little bit. And so I'm going to go equals C9 minus B9. And the difference there is 50 bucks. So I've spent an extra $50 there. Okay, the other thing you need to account for is um, let's go with your utilities. So let's go with your electricity bill. And you know that it tends to come in. Some people have it set so it's the same every month. It's called smooth pay. But let's say this is a case where it is summertime. And I am estimating that my electricity bill is going to be $60. But because I was super efficient, I only paid $45.34. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and do my minus here. Minus C10 minus B10. And in that case, that means I have an extra $14.66 to spend. So that minus means extra money you did not expect to have uh, in your expenses. Um, and let's spell electricity right. I just noticed that. Electricity. There we go. So then we have, um, we all have a cell phone bill these days. Um, and my kids, they also have phones. So my cell phone bill, uh, I'm looking at about $190 a month. And let's say I spent $192.46. Somebody used a little extra data, so I had to pay for that extra data. So C11 minus D11. And, oh, what did I do? equals C11, oh, minus B11, should be B11. It'll give you an error code if you don't get it right. Okay. Uh, another uh, utility you will have every month is um, garbage service. Well, if I'm renting, I don't have garbage service, so I won't put that in there. Um, but what I will put in there is um, cable TV don't have cable TV at my house but this or this could be home phone some people get their internet through their home phone so um, we're gonna call this internet 
and that could be cable or phone depending on how you get your internet uh, if you get it through the phone you're paying for both your phone bill and your cable bill if you get it through the cable company you're paying for your cable TV and your internet so that's going to be about 75 bucks a month and I say I paid 75 23 because that's actually what my bill is at home and that would be C12 minus B12 Okay, so 23 cent difference there uh, let's go ahead and throw cable TV on there also 100 bucks a month and the bill come in at there being nice it's 95 95 and that's gonna be C13 minus B13 all right, so I've saved four dollars and five cents there. Um, so let's see other expenses: gas for car. No, nope. yeah, gas for car. Um, you buy four tanks of gas a month at thirty dollars a tank, so that's one tank per week. You're coming out to one hundred and twenty bucks. And say it's uh, it's spring break, so I I don't work for a week um, because my job gives me spring break off. Maybe I'm an instructional assistant at a school, so I don't get paid for that week that I'm not working, and so I actually only spend ninety eight dollars and sixty five cents on gas, and so my C fourteen minus B fourteen, I've saved twenty one bucks there. Look at that. Uh, another expense you're going to have is groceries. And of course, not groceries, groceries. And of course, I am that family of uh, three. Got three people in my house. So I'm gonna need to have a grocery budget of um, about 500 bucks, let's say. That's conservative. Uh, and sometimes you're gonna spend more than that. So say I spent 625 because um, frankly, I needed more food than I budgeted for. So that's going to be C15 minus B15. So there I've spent an extra 125 bucks. Anything else I might want to spend money on? How about clothing? Kids need clothes. Um, let's have a $100 clothing budget per month. And this particular month, uh, you know, I bought a pair of jeans and a shirt, so I only spent $45.65. So there we're going to do my C16 minus B16. So save some money there. That's great. Uh, how about entertainment? People like to entertain themselves. They like to go out to eat. They like to go to movies. Um, kids definitely like that. So see if I have a $200 entertainment budget. And I only spent $175.65 that month. So let's do my C17 minus B17. All right, you know what I didn't add? Insurance. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go up and show you how you add that in. So we're going to go insert one above. I've created a new column there. And it's going to be insurance. And that's a big one. You have to insure your car and you have to insure your home. And since I'm renting, I have to pay what's called renter's insurance. So this is going to be both my car insurance and my renter's insurance. Uh, I'm the only driver in the household, so that's the good news. Um, so that's going to be about $80 a month. And then my renter's insurance should be about $20 a month. So I'm going to call that 100 And that's a bill that stays stable. So we're going to make that 100 And then we're going to do my C10 minus B10. Boom. So there we go. We've got insurance, clothing, entertainment. So now let's go ahead and throw in our total. Total expenses. And this is where it's going to get interesting. Equals the sum of, we're going to start up here at B8 colon. We're going to click down here on B18. Oops, it's not going to let me do that. Okay, so it's going to be uh, B8 through B18. So let's get rid of that. B8 to B18. Notice how it highlights everything that I'm going to summarize. Boom, $2,495. That's what I budgeted for. Let's see 
what actually happened. So this is going to be C8 through C18 equals the sum of C8 through C18, not C asterisk, C8. And see it highlights the boxes that I'm adding up. That's how much money I actually spent. And uh, this will be interesting. Let's see how my differences add up. Um, that'll be D8 to D18. And hey, I've spent $58.93 more than I had, but the good news is I had 185 extra dollars. So we're going to add another category here. And this is an extremely important category if you can get away with it. Savings. It's where you put money away for a rainy day or for something that you want to buy. And I'm going to be honest here, folks. We're going to keep it real. Uh, there's one thing I also didn't put on here, and that was credit cards. Most people have credit cards. You should only use them when you need to, but honestly, most people use them for special things. So what if I needed to spend $150 a month on my credit cards? And what if I made my payment? So that's going to be uh, C19 minus B19. Boom. And then this, I need to change the formula on. I need to change that 18 to a 19. So that changed up. And that right there needs to go from an 18 to a 19. There we go. That's changed up. Uh-oh. Now we have a problem. Because in this case, uh, I've actually budgeted $5 more than I made. So in that case, guess what? My entertainment budget's going to go down to $195. So, and then your total expenses. And then income minus expenses. So how much money do you make versus how much money are you allocating to um, spend? And this, when you're budgeting, this should come out to zero. So this is going to be uh, B6, which is my total income, all the money I make, minus B21, which is all the money I plan to spend. That should always be zero. And as I look at this here, you always want to put money in savings, so you need to actually lower your entertainment budget because it, entertainment is not something you have to do. So I'm going to shrink that to 150 bucks. Okay. And so now I have $45 left over in my budget. That's going to be what I put into savings. Now this is the money I actually spent. So I spent $2,703. I made $2,825. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and enter um, C6 minus C21 equals C6 minus C21. I have an extra $121.43 to spend. So the good news here is that I'm going to put all of that in savings. And so that's going to turn out to zero. And I, of course, need to change this to C19. And that's C6 minus C21. So why is that? No, because I've added savings, $45. So that should equal B20. And we'll make sure your formulas are right. Okay. And this should equal from C19 to C20 because I added another box. So now I'm adding up all the boxes and my budget comes out to zero. I'm going to go ahead and make this bold. I'm going to go ahead and make this bold. Um, you could also uh, add colors to it. So if I want to make this a red, area. We're going to make this uh, red. And let's go ahead and make our text color white there. we going to have some fun with that. Uh, my income minus expenses. Let's make that a uh, neutral color. We'll make the text white there. But we'll make the background color dark blue. And then my total income, that's a good one to make green. Because uh, income 
is money, so I'll make my text color white there. There you go. See, I've, I've had some fun there. And then, of course, in this case, I haven't put my minus in, so that's going to be my C20 minus B20. Boom. 7643, and this is going to be uh, D6 minus D21. Seventy-six forty-three. So there were seven. The difference um, between what I budgeted and what I spent was seventy-six dollars and forty-three cents. I spent seventy-six dollars and forty-three cents more uh, than I budgeted for. Is what that means. Because the minuses and the pluses, there were more pluses than minuses, so. That came out to $76.43. It is important that this number and this number be zero. If this number and this number are not zero, this number will go up every month. And that's what uh, you really want to avoid. Let me go ahead and make that bold. And I'm going to go ahead and have some fun here. I'm going to make this a background color of black. And let's go ahead and make the numbers green, the color of money. So now there, look, I've had some fun making the colors work out. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what I would like you to do is go home and have a conversation with your parents about how they budget, um, how much they budget, and get real numbers for these categories. If you want to show them this video, go right ahead. I think that would stimulate a very interesting conversation. And I want you to have a real conversation about how much it costs you and your family to live every month uh, and how you and your parents budget their money every month. Uh, if you're smart, you're going to do something like this every month. And it's important that you do because um, life is expensive. And if you don't have a plan, uh, it's not going to work out well. Let's go ahead and center that. Format direction uh, where is there it is center I like that all right so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls with that um, we're gonna call it a day I'm gonna post the lesson this will be your new lesson and uh, I hope you have success on this assignment it's a little bit more challenging than what you've done before but it's about time that I challenge you more anyway so with that ladies and gentlemen this is mr. Blumendahl once again signing off until next time in computer literacy class